think how experience would change. Think how you instantly, and I instantly, could become nothing but the giving of self to our world, to our neighbours. If we completely trusted that the good of conceptual experience, the only presence, form, amount, activity, purpose, good, God, witnessed conceptually, were completely and utterly infallible and automatic without us taking one thought for it. Think how life, experience, beingness, would instantaneously change be free if we trusted that infallible principle, law of all conceptual experience infallibly and automatically being witnessed as you, as I as you, as I stay in pure awareness And so, again, our principle, our beingness of illumined consciousness, illumined experience, is actually very, very simple. And that doesn't mean it's easy, but it's simple. And that is trust that God is... The conceptual experience is good and automatic, omnipresent already. Trust that illumined consciousness says, take no thought, take no thought for your world, your life, anything. Take no thought for anything is what it means. And seek the kingdom instead. Seek pure consciousness instead. Seek the beingness that you are as pure consciousness instead. And then, all of the conceptual experience is added unto you, is revealed as your experience, as the free gift of God, the free revelation of truth. Trust that. Because it is your Father's good pleasure to give it to you. It's, your, it's truth's good pleasure. It's your very own consciousness's good pleasure. It can't do anything else. It has no choice. It's the principle, the truth of life. It's the good pleasure of that principle to reveal the fullness of itself as your experience. Trust it. Trust it. That's all we have to do is trust it. Trust that as we turn within to pure truth, seek the kingdom, seek to know more of consciousness, of truth, of the kingdom, of God, of spirit, whilst taking no thought for the appearance of truth conceptually. Make no effort, take no thought. Don't be concerned. Have no fear. Fear not. It is I. This very thing that you're fearing is actually I. There isn't anything else. There's just I. God is infinite. Infinite. Therefore, even this fuzzy, dark sense of logic can realize if God is infinite, then there is nothing else in all of infinity. Therefore, that which I fear actually is, must be, because there is no other choice, I, truth. Trust it, that's all we have to do. It's simple. It really is simple. But, takes great discipline, only because we've spent all of eternity up until now believing that which appears to be, instead of believing the oneness that it actually is. So it takes great discipline, great effort sometimes. But you see, all discipline, all effort, is just that one discipline and that one effort. 
We never have to deal with a multitudinous anything. All is found truthful as the oneness of being. All truth is found fully present already as the oneness of being. And so all effort, all discipline is to ignore the outer, let go of the outer, and bring awareness to and as oneness, and then let awareness live me. Let awareness itself live me, without any going into the concept. Do you see that? Leave the concept alone. Now, what we heard was this. Imagine that you are the principle of flight. You are that principle of flight. Imagine that. You are the pure principle of flight. Now don't try to start to understand it. We don't have to do that. But just imagine that you are that principle that is flight. Now, conceptually... There are things happening as your principle. They're called airplanes, and they fly as your principle. But now look, does the principle itself have to know anything about all the flights taking off from LAX this morning? All the flights taking off from Heathrow this morning? All the flights taking off from all the airports around the world this morning. Does it have to keep them up in the air? Does it have to apply its mind to keep all the planes up? Does it have to apply its mind to stop them from falling? Does it have to apply more mind to help them land, descend and land? Or is the principle of flight completely unaware of all that conceptual happening. It's completely unaware, isn't it? It doesn't have to be aware. It doesn't have to take thought. It heard Jesus. It said, Jesus said to it, take no thought. And of course it realises it doesn't have to. Take no thought, and yet, at its level of consciousness, we're stretching, we're being a bit poetic here, we're exercising poetic license here, but we can, because we're the freedom of being. So we can say that the principle of flight needs to do nothing but simply be aware of itself. And yet, at its level of consciousness, a whole universe of conceptual activity is happening. And we can say that it knows that, it sees it, let's say, Jesus saw the concepts, and if you're ever unsure of whether that's true, ask yourself, how would Jesus have known the multitudes were there? How would Jesus have known that the lepers were there, the withered hand was there? How could he so-called heal if he wasn't able to see just as conceptually as we see? However, he knew the truth. He didn't believe a single thing that he saw. He knew the truth, but he did see. Of course he did. We're all certain of that, yes? He saw exactly what we see, but he knew the truth. All right, so let's say in our poetic license that the principle of flight sees everything happening, but never takes a single thought for it. It lives in the pure awareness of itself and simply looks out of the window, looks out of itself and sees this glorious conceptual truth of itself. And this is what we must be. This is what Jesus was. Take no thought. You are the principle. You are the purity of life. The rest is just pictures of life. Pictures of life. Pictures of awareness. As the Gita says, all springs forth 
as pictures of life. And they come and they live and they subside. They come, they live joyously, they play with each other in joy and harmony, and then subside. All concept is born as concept, lives joyously in truth, joyously, harmoniously giving of itself to every other concept, and then subsides. It doesn't die, the concept just subsides and then springs forth. It's the same one life, the same one beingness springing forth now as another expression. It comes forth, it lives joyously, harmoniously, it plays, and then subsides. But these are just the concepts of the ever-eternal oneness of being that you are. And you don't take thought. It's like going to the movies and watching activity, watching a drama, but never taking thought. You're just watching the play of I as your conceptual experience. But never are you attaching yourself to those concepts in the same way as the principle of flight never attaches itself. If it did, all the planes would instantly drop, I'm sure. It's simply being I, unattached, but aware, being able to see, but always unattached. Taking no thought. Automatically knowing. All the conceptual good of I is automatic and infallible at this level of consciousness. I don't need to take thought is the thing. I must not take thought is the truth. And so as we now come to oneness, come to the truth of I, and live there wholly, completely, find our wholeness, find our satisfaction of life, of beingness, of sharing, of giving, of companionship, of love, here as the, the purity of consciousness, find our fulfillment, live our fulfillment, be our fulfillment, here, as pure consciousness, pure kingdom, and yet we know that at this level of consciousness that we are existing as, at this moment of our eternity, automatically and infallibly, that good that is our pure beingness shows up as pictures. But it's of no concern of ours. We don't attach ourselves to it. We make no effort. We watch with joy. We reveal the glory. Isn't that an inter interesting word of Jesus? <coughs> we reveal the glory of truth. The glorious conceptual experience that is truthful concept. It is revealed but never attached to never taken thought for. And as we realize more and more now that it is the very taking thought that blocks, that messes up, that makes the whole thing sticky and dark and unable to be the truthful concept. It's glued up with our conditioned thinking, desire. It can't reveal itself as it's caught up in the mesh of human thinking and desire. It cannot, but the moment we set it free, which is setting us free of what appears to be, release God. Release God. Don't try and attach God. Don't try and see God as anything but itself. See God as God. Seek God as God. For God. Stay unattached. The principle is unattached. Seek God so that God may be God as God, as itself, as this experience called you and me. Not seeking God for some form, some experience that we can name, some good that we can name. Don't do that, it's impossible. But seek spirit for spirit, 
so that spirit itself can be spirit itself here. That's all that's needed, that's all that is. Seek the fulfilment of spirit, seek the fulfilment of the principle. The principle of flight is the fulfilment of itself. Nothing else has to happen. And as the Gita says, even if the whole world of concepts were to disappear, I still am. Even if no planes take off today, the principle is still the principle, fully enjoying itself. Nothing else has to happen. And yet as we watch happenings without attachment, then they are glorious only. And this is just another way of saying impersonalize experience. Don't hold on to a personal eye, a personal sense of experience. Because that personal sense is the conceptual sense. The personal sense is holding on to concept as I. Well, now we better get on with trying to heal it and fix it, because there's nothing else to, to save us. We've taken ourselves out. Now we're in trouble. We're in a lot of trouble. It's called being human. <laughs> but as we wake up to the, the purity of self and be satisfied with that purity only and wholly find our fulfillment, live our fulfillment as spirit, as the purity of God, of the kingdom that is God. For its self. That's clear now, isn't it? For its self. Nothing else. Not conditionally. Oh, I'm feeling peace now, but I hope it turns up as my healed body. Well, it's never going to appear as your healed body because you're hoping for a conceptual truth. There is no conceptual truth. Truth is truth, seen as truthful concept, if we keep away from concept, if we're not taking thought, not desiring, attaching ourselves to conceptual good, or the desire of it. But if we have attached, and now we're trying to see the truth of it, we've blown it. There's no truth there to be found of its own, in its own right. So, as... Oh, uh, in the same way, thank you, oh, thank you, thank you, the windows of heaven are open today. It's like trying to find the truth of flight in an airplane. Where's the principle of flight? I've been told it's here, in this airplane. It's not in the airplane. We cannot find the principle of flight in an airplane. The principle of flight is. It's omnipresent. Release the airplane. Stop attaching yourself to the airplane. And seek the principle of flight. Then you can have as many airplanes in the sky as you want. And we do. Truth isn't in the body. Isn't in the bank. Isn't in the dollar. Isn't in anything earthly. It's not there. Stop looking for it there. Come to truth itself. Live truth itself. For itself only. Find the fulfilment of being, completely and utterly, in and as truth itself only and completely. Start with truth. Carry on with truth for the sake of truth alone. Finish with truth alone for the sake of truth alone. And then look out of your window of consciousness and see it all conceptually. Ah... Oh. Oh, look at that. I am sure if we followed Jesus, every step he'd be going, Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, look, at, thank you, thank you. The praise of God, the praise of the Father all the time. Oh, thank you, thank you. Because it's a continual revelation of more and more truth witnessed conceptually as we look out of our window of consciousness. <coughs> All right, let's spend five minutes together resting purely and wholly in the principle, the truth of being. 
without a single concern, a single thought for anything else. And as the mind wants to go and have a thought, just bring it back. It doesn't matter. You're in charge of the mind. The mind has no power. Not at all. So don't worry about it. Just bring it back. It's just like a little puppy running away. You bring it back. little child running away. It's okay. It's all safe. But you just want to bring it back. It's the prodigal. It's okay. Just come back. And even before you're fully back, the whole of the kingdom is yours. The very act of turning back. Hear that now. That's so beautiful. The very act of turning back, even before the first step back, is the whole of the kingdom being you. Let's rest there together.
Thank you. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning into our channel. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to hit that like button below. It really helps us out. And why not share this video with your friends? Spread the word and help us reach more people. Lastly, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so you never miss a new video from us. Thanks for watching and see you next time.